Hey guys, you're probably wondering why I decided to upload after a whole year. Why did I decide to come back after abandoning my audience? Well, let's just say that I just feel like it. I'm not exactly returning, I'm just making videos when I feel like it. Or when I have fun with it. But anyways, in today's video, I play Dungeon Heroes for 100 days, which is a mod pack featured in the 1.20.1 version of Minecraft. But just to make sure and make one more thing clear, the video editing is kind of rushed in a way due to the fact that I have, due to the lack of time that I have and when this video is uploaded, I'm on vacation, so yeah. But without further ado, let's jump right into the, the video. In day one, I created the, uh, the world, did a little exploring around the mountain area only to realize that it is only, uh, that it is becoming nighttime. So what I thought was the best idea was to dig a hole and create a base for the night. Day two, I did more exploring around the mountain and found this massive um, woodland mansion looking thing and I did more mining. In day three, I just explored around the area killing a bunch of animals and trying to get a, a lot of food supplies. Nothing too interesting that day. Day four, I forgot to record, but I'm guessing I did more mining. Day five, I just did more mining as well. In day six, I decided that I had full set of iron armor. So I thought that it would be a good idea to infiltrate the woodland mansion thing back in day two. Day seven and eight, I continued the exploration and looting around the mansion. And I was able to get my first death of the 100 day journey. I also got a, a diamond sword which was also cool. Day 9, I didn't record but I'm guessing I did. I was doing more looting around the mansion. Day 10, I, was, I did a whole cleanup run where I just made sure that I looted everything that was in the mansion. In day 11, I finished the looting and came out f absolutely stacked. Day 12, I continued disenchanting, nothing too much that day. Day 13, I did more mining as well as I found out that the mansion was cut in half due to to the build height limit. Day 14, I didn't do that much other than um, going out exploring. Day 15, after exploring a lot, I found this portal called the prisoner's quarters, but and I, I got scared in, upon entering. So instead of, instead I just ran out. Day 16, I didn't really do much, but just sorting items ex and expanding my base. Day 17, I infiltrated this tower that contained husk and skeletons but i'm still kind of confused on and what the purpose of this tower is since it didn't really contain that much interesting stuff but just diamonds and loot day 18 i continued looting the tower and struggled a ton because they were spawning out of nowhere so much just come out of nowhere for no reason so yeah in day 19 i found this mine shaft near my base so i went to explore the mine shaft and found a couple of diamonds. In day 20, I came back to the base and crafted a full diamond armor set. In day 21, I took some bulk shells from the mansion and created an enchanting room in my base and also took some obsidian to make another portal. Days 22 to 24, I didn't really do much but just uh, a bunch of work around my base and got a music disc and created a jukebox with my extra uh, one extra diamond. Day 25, I did a bunch of work exploring around my world, especially around the sea near my base. Day 26, I jumped into the nether portal in my base and immediately found another fortress near the portal. Later, I, I just focused on mining nether quartz to get XP. I also enchanted my full diamond armor set. The first part of day 27, I went around uh, the places that I explored around the map and grabbed a bunch of beds. Then I went back to the nether with a ton of pickaxes and beds so that I can mine for ancient debris. Days 28 to 29, I mined for the ancient debris. Days 30 to 31, I tried making netherite armor but then realized that it only worked if you got a netherite smithing table and template, which was very confusing. Day 32, I wanted to get this uh, specific armor set, but I needed a bunch of wool. So I went out to get seeds and get wheat so that I can start uh, a, getting a sheep farm and a wheat farm too. Day 33, I finally found some sheep after searching for one the whole day, which is why it's nighttime and I lured it all the way back to the, my sheep farm near my base. Day 34, 
I found some more sheep and lured them back to base again. Day 35, I'm not sure what I was doing but I just went AFK. In day 36, I went exploring the nether and found this massive village or a town near the nether fortress and did a bunch of looting. In day 37, unfortunately the town had a massive area where they would have a lot of amount of spawners for wither skeletons to spawn which I had a ton of problems with and was hard to loot. In days 38 to 42, I had to com make complete genocide so that I, in day 42, I was uh, finally able to run back home with a ton of loot after killing a ton of w uh, wither skeletons and destroying their spawners. In day 43, I switched motives so instead of getting full netherite armor set, I would uh, be able to craft nether ruby armor, which was way better than netherite armor which I would uh, also transform into fire ruby armor set. In day 44, I had a I had a bunch of weather skeleton skulls, so what I did it was decide to fight the weather. which was way easier than I thought. In day 45, I went back to the nether to loot the village again, but also ran into this other part of the nether fortress and decided to loot it. In day 46, I did more exploring around the nether. In day 47, I didn't really do anything. I did a bunch of enchanting and crafted a full a fire ruby tool set, including the hoe. In day 48, I found out that I needed a nether res to create more nether ruby on tools. So I went around exploring for nether reeds, which was were like uh, sugar cane canes, but in the nether, and they were really hard to find since they only spawned in certain biomes. So after a whole struggle going through the nether jungle, I was able to uh, finally able to get four nether reeds. In day 48, I, since I had four nether reeds, I decided to grow more of them by using the, the four reeds that I already had. In day 49, I didn't really do anything. In day 50, I did a bunch of AFK so that I could grow the nether reeds. And later that day, I wanted nether ender pearls since I wanted to create the eye of enders using my blaze rods but I couldn't find any piglins for some reason. It took until day 52 to finally find two piglins and traded with them. In day 53, I crafted a bunch of eye of enders and did a bunch of breeding with my sheep. In day 54, I did a bunch of crafting and crafted this um, crossbow called the ruby uh, heavy crossbow. In day 55, I didn't really do much. I did a bunch of work around my base and I upgraded most of my uh, weapons and armor. In day 56, I worked on my wheat farm in my base. Nothing too much. Day 57, I went out exploring and found another one of those husk towers that ha also had skeletons in it too. After that exploration, I found this place that contained a bunch of pillagers, which is where I fought a, a broker and I managed to get the totem of undying as soon as I was about to die. Day 58, I didn't record so I didn't really know what I did that day. In day 15, I took my chance and decided to explore the prisoners quarters which was the portal back in day 15 and killing a bunch of mobs and looting a bunch of stuff too. In day 60, I made it back home safely from the prisoners quarters and decided to use all the enchanted books that I got from the prisoners quarters to enchant all my armor sets as well as weapons too. In day 61, I returned back to the prisoners quarters 
since I thought that I had missed some stuff from it. Through my search again, I was able to find a, a portal that led to like a second level for the prisoner's quarters called the Promenade of the Condemned. Day 62, I explored more of the Promenade of the Condemned, only to find and leave a couple of minutes uh, later because I thought that uh, and there was too much mobs to fight and I didn't have, I want to die there. Day 63, I went back to the nether to do some more trading so that I can get more Eye of uh, Ender Pearls so that I can craft more Eye of Enders. In day 64, I, I returned back from the nether only to be able to achieve 4 Eye of Enders. In day 65, I went back into the wilderness to do more exploring but managed to find this underground zombie and skeleton dungeon. I kept and uh, getting into near death situations so I just ran out. In day 66, I noticed that I had a bunch of these things called the soul stars. So I was curious what they did, which to my surprise just worked like uh, an eye of ender. So I decided to do a lot of exploring following the soul star. Day 67, I continued exploring only to end midway due to the reason that I was losing food. In day 68, I came back home only to do a bunch of uh, disenchanting and enchanting. Nothing too interesting that day. In day 69, I found out that in this mod pack, you can't use the ordinary eye of enders in order to find the strongholds and light up the end portal. So instead, you gotta find uh, several different eyes, 12 to be exact, in order to light up the frame. But you need a lot more in order to find it due to the reason that they have a chance of disappearing when searching to be specific they also work just like the eye of enders which is why i'm here trying to infiltrate the ocean monument in order to get my first eye the guardian eye in day 70 after learning that the guardians do not drop the guardian eye but the other guardian only does so I decided that to infiltrate the ocean monument properly and only target the Elder Guardian. However, upon uh, killing the Elder Guardian, it, I sadly did not get the Guardian Eye due to the reason that it has a 30% uh, chance of dropping. But then I also drowned. At night, after being so furious that the Guardian Elder Guardian didn't drop the eye, I decided to go out looking for shipwrecks in order to get the buried treasure map where you can also get an eye from the treasure too. Day 71, I went out exploring since the chest from the shipwreck didn't ha have any buried treasure map. I went out looking uh, for any water um, ocean monuments or pillager towers since they can also contain, contain an eye. But to my uh, surprise, I was able to find a village after traveling for so long. In day 72, I decided to go back to my base so I can connect a, way, a waypoint uh, so I can teleport from the base and back to the village. In day 73, I did more exploring and found some pillager outposts but sadly didn't have any evokers which are the pillagers that can also drop an eye. But later that day to my surprise, I was able to find an igloo which had an, a 70% chance of spawning an eye inside the chest, which it did. And I was so happy to and be able to get my second proper eye. In day 74, I went out and to do more exploring and search for any other ways to get an eye for the end portal. And also died, almost died too. In day 75, I just continued uh, exploring. In day 76, I was so lucky and managed to find a shipwreck that had a buried, buried uh, treasure map. And dug out the treasure map, which is where I got my third eye. The black eye which only had a 30 percent chance of being in the buried treasure in day 77 i just continued exploring in day 78 i came back from exploring and found out that if you were to make a master level level cleric you could trade tons of emeralds and a rabbit foot in exchange for an evil eye but the thing is i needed a, to get a master level uh, level cleric in the first place which is what i did that day day 79 i searched for rabbits in order to get rabbit's foot in order to get the evil eye from the master level cleric day 80 to 81 i did more exploring nothing too much in day 82 i found some pillager tower and started to raid somehow however the raid ended and i didn't get a chance to fight an evoker in day 83, I went back to a random village with a bad omen effect and started a raid. Despite starting a whole raid in the village and killing every enemy, I didn't get to encounter an evoker. 
so no eye that day. Day 84, I did more exploring. In day 85, I went to a uh, tower that was classified as a woodland mansion in the mod pack for some reason. And from these, you, if you lose some of the chests, you will have a chance of uh, getting the magical eye. And since, because of my luck so far was so good, I managed to get a, a magical eye from the chest at the top of the tower. In day 86, I went around every village that I have been in uh, in search for a rabbit. But that day I was too unlucky since I didn't happen to run into any rabbits. In day 87, I did something smart. So instead of going north where it's all cold and all snow and where rabbits have a small chance of spawning in, I went down south where it's hot and so that I could find some deserts and find some rabbits in there too. On the way down south, I ran into a monastery which was not very interesting and important. Day 88, I continued on my journey. Day 89, I finally ran into a desert biome which had a village and also a desert pyramid near, near it too. Day 90 to 91, I went to several different and desert pyramids that were situated around the area just to have no luck in finding an old eye due to the reason that it has a 10% chance of spawning in the desert pyramids. Day 92, I realized that my 100 days was coming to a close. So I did what any Minecraft player would do and create a cool house to end the, uh, the 100 days off. So I basically gave up, just gave up on trying to find the eyes since I was nowhere near achieving the goal of beating the Ender Dragon. So day 93 to 99, I worked on a smexy looking house. In the middle of day, in day 98, I got a name tag back from my base and decided to name my dog Rob Dillingham just for the jokes and the laughs. So we finally landed on day 99 and that's where I finally was able to finish my house. And the night of day 99, I, I decided to go out around my house just slaying, slaying mobs in the good old Minecraft fashion way. And on day 100, I watched the sunrise with my dog Rob Dillingham and it was just a good and romantic way to end 100 days.